Have you started to get serious with your powerlifting training? Do you feel strong now and you want to compete in powerlifting? Here are a couple tips that recommend you understanding before signing up for your first meet. Now, the most obvious thing that you have to understand with powerlifting is that there's basic rules. These rules are for squatting, benching, deadlifting, and training under the right conditions with stiff bar kilo plates. This is plastered all over the rule book and manual for competition. We aren't going to get into those. We're going to get into the mindset with a powerlifting prep. So there's two ways you can go about it. The first way is you do not prep at all for it. And I really recommend this for the person that's making week-to-week -week progress. They never hit a plateau. They're under the six-month mark of lifting heavy for powerlifting. And pretty much, you just take four or five days off of training and go hit the meet with whatever training you've been off of. Now, on the contrary, if you're a little bit more advanced and you saw a little bit of deacceleration of your progress, still making progress, but some days the lift is not there, then I would highly recommend entering a serious prep. Now, what I mean by serious is to be very measured. Serious doesn't mean train really freaking hard and get super sore and under recovered, but to take an approach that training matters two weeks from whatever point you're at. So if you're peaking for about 12 weeks out, 16 weeks out, you need to plan for your deloads and you need to plan for your single reps. And if you do either too close or too far out, your best performance might not be there meet day. So personally for myself, when I decide I'm going to sign up for a meet, I give myself at least 12 to 13 weeks, bare minimum before signing up. Of these 12 to 13 weeks, about nine weeks is going to be hard training. Training. One week before the meet is going to be no training or minimal training. About 10 weeks, I'll take a very forced training deload, even if I don't need it because sometimes training catches up in the later weeks. And weeks 12 to 13, those are the weeks I try to make my training readapted for meet prep. Now I say readapted for meet prep because usually the timing of your training schedule might not align with the timing that you have to peak for. This includes not having an SPD day, not having your most important lift prioritized for the meet day itself. So if you're a big deadlifter, I'd recommend having your main deadlift day on the Saturday for big squatter. I'd recommend having your main squat day on the Saturday. And when you're far out from a meet, you have to create a gradient of what you're going to keep in your training and what you're going to discard as you progress throughout the training. So you do not have junk volume or bodybuilding volume four to six weeks out of your meet prep if you really care about performance. And yes, I learned from the hard way from last year's nationals. I looked sick, but was not able to perform at the best and spent way too much money for that type of performance. So here's a general rule that I like to follow. About 12 weeks out, I just lower the training intensity, meaning a little bit less load, a little bit higher reps on my accessory compounds and machine isolations. About six weeks out, I'll start pulling back on one to two compound accessory movements. And about four weeks out, that's when you have to kind of decide, is it even worth doing the isolation? Now, in some cases it is worth it, specifically for the bench press. It's going to be your shoulders, rear delts, and triceps so your stabilizers do not feel super skinny and experience atrophy from detraining too early. Hamstrings, leg extensions, Bulgarian split squats. Those are usually good movements to keep in up until about one to two weeks out at a very low RP. So you do not feel like you completely lost a ton of muscle mass, which could affect your leverages and movement pattern, making it feel kind of awkward. Now moving even further, more macroscopic away from what you should be doing is also to understand that the meat prep, if you fail in meat prep at any point in training, you're going to experience more fatigue. And when you experience more fatigue, you have to be reactive by compensating the following week to increasing your recovery to either finish the rest of your training, or if you fail on your last lift, just take the foot off the pedal and jumpstart the recovery process one to two weeks earlier so you could super compensate on meet day. Basically, people's worst enemies when coming to meet prep is overshooting, getting a little bit greedy, and dropping off momentum. The general rule is you should not be number hunting, and instead if the numbers are there, great, go for it, but going too heavy too early on in your training prep is the worst way to start a prep. So mindset wise, if you feel good, you feel like there's good training momentum, do not push your luck. But if you are, push closer to the end of prep versus the beginning. Now moving back even further, if you're very experienced, expecting to hit multiple meets a year at the highest level that you could perform is unrealistic. I'm not saying you cannot do it. You could definitely do it, but there's going to be significantly more risk in getting injured, in which I like to compare meat prep similar to bulking and cutting. Off seasons like the building, the bulking phase, and cutting is like the meat prep itself. If you do a lot of cutting periods in a short period of time, you're not going to get very far. This analogy is not perfect, but if you do a lot of meat preps throughout a year, you're not going to have much time to really build on your foundation which is the off-season phase where you will usually bulk this is why myself i do not love competing regularly at best i'll compete about once every six months because the nature of a meat prep is very grimy very hard on the body and 12 weeks out when you're going through the meat prep you do not want to even compete at the end of it you're gonna feel super tired all the time you're gonna feel exhausted now it's nowhere near like a bodybuilding prep where you actually are gonna be starving your brains out you're pretty much just gonna feel sleepy all the time and have less energy than usual that's completely normal 
So if you're thinking about competing, choose about one meet that you really want to kill. And if you're at that level where you have to do qualifying meets for nationals or some other higher level meet, take them as token meets. Try to fit them in training where you can only take maybe like three or four days off of training and do not go all out. Just try to qualify. So your training momentum throughout the year isn't going to be derailed from you having to qualify. Remember, Competing in powerlifting is basically an exam prep, a preparation phase, not a building phase. It's getting you ready to take the test from all your foundation and base training with an off season in powerlifting, in which a lot of people just call hypertrophy training as well, to be quite honest. If you're a self proclaimed power builder and you train with a little bit of powerlifting in your training, you could easily fit powerlifting into your training once a year, about 12 to 13 weeks, and see a minimal disturbance to your bodybuilding slash hypertrophy training. Oh yeah, and the most important part about entering a meat prep is to not not weight cut if it's your first meet. Unless you're like one or two pounds heavier, cutting five to 10 pounds during your first time meat prepping is a horrible idea. Only if you're experienced with weight cutting and powerlifting would I recommend shedding 10 to 15 pounds down into a weight class because your first meet, there's no expectation to even begin with. So you might as well just do the best you can with all the variables going into your favor. If you mess up your weight cut and you're too heavy, you're just taking away from the recovery that you could have benefited from that might have taken away from your performance on meet day. That's a problem for another meet. Now coming back even further from all this talk, you do your powerlifting meet, you're in your powerlifting off season and you feel like you're on the fatter side or less aesthetic side and you want to do a weight cut. Do not get locked in to the strength addiction of trying to stay the heaviest that you could be to be the strongest you could be because you're afraid that once you start cutting, you're going to lose strength. Now I'm doing this right now. I've gained a lot of weight. I didn't like how I looked and I got very freaking strong. Wall bulking has a ton of benefits. If you do care about your health, be okay with having a little bit of fluctuation with your strength. If you're going to lose weight through dieting, you're going to lose a lot of strength. A lot of this strength loss is due to water manipulation and leverage changes and simply just being under recovered. If you're able to maintain about 95 to 90% of your strength while cutting down 10 to 15 pounds, you're probably getting stronger. And the reason being is that you're functioning off significantly less calories. That's going to have effect on your metabolism. It's going to affect on your body weight. And once you're done your cut and you start eating normally again, the first thing is that you're not going to get fat right away. You might gain one to three pounds of water weight, but you're going to be able to eat way more and stay lean. And in this recomposition phase, your strength is going to start shooting up again. Now, it depends how much weight you lose, how fat you got, and how strong you were at your bulk weight. But if you lost 10 to 15 pounds, you're probably able to match that strength at a lower body weight or very close to at least, then potentially build upon it, which is how a lot of powerlifters get stronger over time while getting smaller. Body recomps are very much underrated when it comes to powerlifting. It's not just for aesthetics. Well, in my case, it is, but it's also because because you do not want to waste real estate on your physique with fat mass if you have a lot of lean mass to gain. So take those bodybuilding phases in your off season. Even if your strength is not crazy right now or close to all time strength and even lost a little bit of strength, that's completely fine as long as you're building towards hypertrophy, which in the long term, when you go back to lower reps, when you go back to more specific training, it's going to pay dividends compared to if you didn't do any of that and had small triceps for bench, small quads for squats and weak hamstrings for deadlifts. Powerlifting is about making your weakest link strong. Hope you like the video like the video comment below use code justly for huge supplements use code justly for young la peace out